So this is a vein motor and you find them used all over the place because they're basically compact, cheap and reasonably good, reasonably. But you find them used in things like jackhammers and drills, uh, screwdrivers, spanners, sanders, food mixers, blenders, all over the place. So we take the top off, we can see how it actually works. Now the air is forced in here, hits a vein, forcing that to rotate until it reaches that point when it's exhausted. This doesn't rotate on the center, it rotates eccentrically off center. And as it rotates, these veins in the center here are either forced out by centrifugal force or the fact that it's pressing on that side there. And that makes little chambers where the air can do its work. Now if we take that central drum out, we can have a better look at these veins. So if we look at the veins, and the veins are kind of wing-shaped, and they push each other, so they have a little push bar at the top on that one, which will push the veins backwards and forwards, and equally on this one, there's a little push bar at the bottom, so it doesn't interfere with the other one. That movement backwards and forwards is what creates those chambers. Now it does come with two major problems. The first one is, in order to do its job, it has to create those little chambers, and it doesn't do that very well, so of course it leaks, and leaking leads to a lot of power loss. The other thing, of course, is those vents have to press against the outer wall, and that creates a lot of friction, so they aren't particularly efficient. The thing going for them is their ease of construction, their compact nature, and that's why they're used a huge amount. Now, of course, they do work. Even if I just blow on this, we'll get it to spin. <laughs> now, anybody interested in the Venn motor, of course, I'll put this on Thingiverse. The link will be in the description. You can download the Venn motor yourself. But those two issues, really, are what I think was the inspiration for this. I mean, this just looks like a disc of plastic. It is, in fact, the Di Pietro air motor, which was invented by Angelo Di Pietro in order to overcome those limitations. Okay, let's take this thing apart. This is the air inlet right there. In this case here is in fact the valve chest. If we remove the valve chest, then we can see the valve itself. That valve has a two millimeter clearance between the valve and the chest to allow air here. But that is the air inlet port, and we only let air in when it lines up with that port there. And underneath there, there is the valve slot. This one will remain a bit of a mystery until later, but it joins this and this. If we take that top off, we can see the inside of the Di Pietro motor, and it looks astonishingly like a vein motor. But it isn't. It's actually quite different. To put the main body together, there's a bottom and a top plate, and in the bottom plate I've stuffed a skater bearing, which is 22mm by 7mm by 8mm. Then there are the veins, and these are the veins, and they have an axle that goes through them, and it's free to swivel on that axle. That vein goes in there, with the rounded side pointing outwards, so that it's free to move in and out. If it's not free, you may have to sand that vein surface a little bit until it is free, and all six go all the way around. Like that. Now you may notice that there's a little notch in each one of those, and that's because they need a spring to make sure that they keep coming out. And instead of using a spring, I'm going to use an elastic band. But once you've put all those in, then this turns over, and there's an alignment notch in it. Line up the alignment notches, and push that down with a little bit of glue to hold it in place. So the easiest way to put the rubber bands in, move the flap out of the way, take a rubber band, cut it in half and tie a knot on one end, and then sew a needle onto the other end. Drop the needle straight the way through those two holes, and pull the rubber band through. Once it gets through to the knot, then put a bit of super glue on it to hold it in place. When it's in place, flip it over, pull that so there's a little bit of tension, and put a bit of super glue there to hold that in place as well. When that's done, move the veins back into position and pop in the central cylinder. So it's like that.
The central carriage is made up of these components. There's this carrier here, a long axle, two short axles and two spacers. You're also going to need four skater bearings. The skater bearings go in here. So you pop a skater bearing in and push one of the short axles through. Then you put a spacer and then another skater bearing. So that it's like that and we repeat that on the other side. The main axle goes through there so it pokes out 7mm from either side, it doesn't matter which, just feed it through make sure that's 7mm. Once the axle is glued in place we can pop it in the centre and just shove everything round so we get that. This is one of the really interesting things about this motor. If I take the central disc and put a dot on there and a dot there, so we've got two reference marks which are there and there, then I take hold of that central disc and push that disc around. What you'll notice is those two dots hardly move at all. This central ring doesn't rotate. Just by pushing it up and down the edges as if they were pistons, what it does is causes that to rotate. And what that means is there's very little friction in this device. Right, if we flip that over, these are the exhaust ports. And that big thick ring in there has three states. One when the exhaust port is open, one when the exhaust port is on the inside of the ring, and one where the exhaust port is covered by this thick ring. So this thick ring is acting as a valve. And what happens is, as that moves, it alternately covers and uncovers the exhaust port and reveals it on the inside there. And that's because there's a point at which the exhaust port is covered, but some exhaust still needs to go out. Now the inlet port there, because it's recessed into the body, is never occluded. The top plate has the inlet port there lined up with the inlet ports, and these are exhaust ports as well, but they're always on the inside of that thick ring. And that's where this comes into play. Now as this valve rotates, remember the valve is fixed to the main axle, so it rotates as the motor rotates. First of all, the inlet port lines up with the inlet port there, and air is forced in. As the air is forced in, that central cylinder is moving, keeping that rotating, and of course it moves to this point, which shuts the inlet off. At that point, the back exhaust port is open, but it keeps on turning until the back exhaust port is closed, but some air still needs to be exhausted. This then links up the inlet port, which has now become an outlet port, with that ring that we saw that's always on the inside of the main chamber, and that leads to the rear exhaust port. That's very clever. So again, the air is coming in here, courtesy of the valve. It pushes that big ring around until it reaches a point where it can exhaust through there, which continues to push around because the next chamber is lined up. That then becomes occluded. This bit here joins the still open inlet, making it now an outlet port, and then it feeds the outlet the exhaust gas in that one there, and that one there is always on the inside here. So as it's gone round and this exhaust port has opened to the inlet there, it can still exhaust until the chamber is fully exhausted. Right, we can now pop that back on, lining up its marks, pop the valve back on, and pop the chest back on. Now, De Pietro first came up with this design in 1999, and he says it's 100% more efficient than any other competing air engine. Now, I'm not sure about that. One thing I am sure about is that this isn't. So the death of any air engine is how close you can fit it and how you can prevent any leaks at all. And I've printed this on a filament printer at 0.2 resolution, so it's not going to be the best fit, and that's going to make it more of a demonstration model than anything. But I'm the kind of guy who likes to get his hands on things. If I can make something, or do something, or touch something, I can get a very good understanding. And a couple of the things that really struck me was um, this central mechanism is a real revelation to me. I love it, actually. I find it absolutely fascinating. I can think of hundreds of things to do with it. The valves, I think, are very clever. And even though I think the valve system is clever, I'm not actually 100% sure if that's a good way of arranging the valves or not. So certainly, 
it's an inspiration for me to be able to build this and have a look at it and play with it and see what else might come of it. Now I have put the files for this on Thingiverse and the link is in the description along with the link for the vein motor. So should somebody want to grab this and play around with it, please feel free. My only hope would be you would share your explorations with the video with the rest of us. Now I'll certainly be looking at this a bit more because there are other things that it has inspired. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.